Is playing a caster really that much harder than melee? Today, we will find out, as we rank every ranged DPS in the game from easy to hard in WoW PvP based on skill floors. And at the end, we give a crown to the spec we think is actually the easiest to play in the entire game. To kick things off, we'll be starting with Devastation Evokers, who are so easy that they are commonly referred to as the Demon Hunters of casters, since they check almost every single box for having a low skill floor. But before anyone gets confused, let's be clear. Having a low skill floor means needing to put in less effort in order to climb. For ranged DPS, a low skill floor means having a simple rotation with strong instant cast damage, combined with a straightforward win condition and enough passive tankiness that kiting isn't needed. If a DPS can check all these boxes, it's going to be on the easier side. Of course, being S tier or OP will slightly influence our rankings. But what we want to make clear is that fundamentals really do carry in Arena. The number one reason players get stuck is because they're making small fixable mistakes without even realizing it. That's why at Skillcapped, our damage courses start with teaching the foundation of every spec. Since we know from over 10 years of experience that this is what truly carries. Seriously, you could be missing out on a ton of pressure if you aren't sticking to your damage goals, or if you don't know the burst rotations needed to deal with the insane amount of healing people put out at higher ratings. And with our new and improved skill capped UI, we can give you all the information you need to deal more damage, like tracking all of your offensive buffs and procs without having the headache of setting it up yourself. Skillcapped allows you to speedrun the learning process and get ahead of the competition faster than everyone else. So much so that we guarantee you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. For now, let's get back to the video. Although you do have to cast quite a bit as Devastation to deal damage, and even though they do have a short 25 yard range, this doesn't really matter when you have multiple schools to choose from while also having aura mastery up whenever you really want to commit to the fight. Other than Devastation's simplistic damage profile, they also have some of the easiest to use defensives in the game with Obsidian Scales, which now comes in at a 40% wall with two charges that you just pop off the bat to get the ball rolling, as it will also give you aura mastery thanks to Obsidian Metal as well as a nice panic button with rescue, which can be a bit tricky to use if you're facing something like a frost mage spam rooting you as it denies you getting it off. However, when successful, this ability will save you in 9 out of 10 instances. And if all that wasn't enough, you can just use hover to dart around the map while blasting your lasers and disintegrating the enemy team at the same time, making kiting a breeze. Finally, Devastation is one of the strongest two-minute cooldowns in the game with Dragon Rage, so its win condition and shuffle is often just live long enough until this comes back and then it's lights out for the enemy team without having utilized Sleepwalk, as they will often just kill through healing while their targets are stuck in a deep breath. Because of all these factors, we'll be putting Devastation in the very easy category. Moving on, we then have the red-headed stepchild of Devastation, Augmentation of Ochres, the only support spec in the game. Augmentation is in a weird spot in PvP where it doesn't really support anyone but itself to deal mediocre damage while giving its teammates a dribble of main stat and some crit chance from prescience. The rotation isn't necessarily hard, however you do need to keep up your ebb and might so it can be a bit tricky to dive into if you're not familiar with the concept of using abilities to extend buffs. Because of this core design, messing up the rotation can be punishing as you risk losing the main stat increase it provides, which admittedly does at some depth. As for their burst rotation, it's pretty simple, yet not as effective as some other 2 minute specializations, making it not a guaranteed win on the second pop due to a lack of damage. This makes augmentation a bit tricky, as they don't quite deal enough pressure on their own to win the game, thus relying a bit more on their sleep crowd control and enabling their partners through their stat increases. Lastly, Augmentation has the same easy to use defensives as Devastation, with the added bonus of a cheat death, so you're not really going to struggle to survive with Hover and Obsidian Scales at your claw tips. All in all, Augmentation is basically just Devastation, but with less damage, making it a tad harder to play as you are more at the mercy of your teammates to finish the game. For this reason, we'll be placing Augmentation in the easy category. Up next, we have Frost Mages. Now, although this class is one of the main complaints of melees everywhere this expansion, they aren't that easy to play. This is because you actually have to kite well to survive, matching your shimmers and knocks to enemy mobility while also having enough foresight to know when to alter time before you take large hits of damage for it to be effective. 
Although, with Frost Mage's damage being heavily tied to instants these days, as well as the amount of passive snares they have through simply dishing out their not so difficult rotation, you can win enough games without kiting perfectly a lot of the time. Which is especially true into other casters, as you can easily duck in and out of pillars while pumping out insane DPS while the enemy ranged can't get a single hit on you. And if they tank you for too long, then they risk getting ice lanced to kingdom come. And then, when you add to the fact that Frost Mages come with two ice blocks for the perfect panic button, surviving is definitely not as hard as it may seem at first glance. Now, along with surviving, landing crowd control is usually what separates good mages from bad. However, with Frost's instant damage being so high, this also goes out the window, making the class a lot easier than before. You can simply blink backwards, spam out Fingers of Frost, and win on your second use of Veins when it comes back up without having to take any risks for Polymorph. After all, it's probably going to break anyway. In conclusion, Frost Mage is going to be placed in our medium difficulty tier. Although it is typically seen as fairly difficult, with an increase in damage and instance comes an increase in ease of play. Arcane Mage, on the other hand, have to cast a ton to get any meaningful damage off. Back in Dragonflight, Arcane's main way of dealing damage was through clear casting missiles. However, in The War Within, your damage also has been put back into Arcane Blast a ton. So much so that there's about five different modifiers for it. And great, this works in PvE, where Arcane Mages are able to happily free cast their way to the number one DPS in the game. However, in PvP, when there's more micro CCs in the arena than microtransactions in the Blizzard store, this doesn't quite work out. Couple that with only having one school of magic, which coincidentally is also the school that all your mobility is on, and you're going to have a bad time, unless you know how to fake cast and pick your windows to cast well. In which case you only have a slightly less bad time, as the damage just isn't that good in PvP. It's not all doom and gloom for Arcane though, as they can still deal a decent chunk of damage through barrage and orbs when facing multiple targets, but in those single target moments, they can really struggle. And it certainly doesn't help that their burst cooldowns are probably the most telegraphed in the game. Why exactly Arcane Power turned into a 2 second casted ability, we don't know. And trying to precast an evocation for the intellect buff basically has a precognition requirement. And even if you get all that off, you still need to cast spells into your Touch of the Magi for it to actually do any damage. Then on top of all that, you got the general mage gameplay of kiting and surviving, as well as having to usually land crowd controls to win the game as the damage you're putting out won't really overwhelm anyone until later in dampening. In conclusion, Arcane Mage falls under the very difficult category as it simply has to cast far too much, its goes are far too easy to shut down, and it only has one meaningful school of magic. Moving on, we then have Fire Mage, which has undergone a little bit of a revamp in The War Within. Unfortunately, this revamp means that all those new talents on the right of the tree are completely ignored because they don't do any damage, which sadly is true for almost all of Fire's abilities. Its damage is pathetically weak, forcing you to spec into Glass Cannon for a 15% HP trade-off to make you compete with everyone else. Which, don't get me wrong, was fine back in Dragonflight as you could just sit 80 yards away with Flame Cannon and simply avoid all the incoming damage from melees and casts alike, but with its removal, you just can't do that anymore, making you a squishy cloth class with no HP and very little damage output. And if you couple that with the fact that it's even harder to kite as a fire mage than its other two brethren specs due to a lack of snares, and you end up with a class that doesn't kill through healing, yet is too vulnerable to be in the fight looking for crowd control. The only saving grace of fire is that its damage rotation is pretty easy, and you don't really ever have to cast anything as you have a bunch of instants at your disposal, and even if you do get kicked, getting locked on fire doesn't affect your defensives in the slightest. All in all, we'll be placing fire in the hard tier. It's not quite as difficult as arcane, as you can still deal damage when trained, but making that damage achieve anything while surviving is what's going to set you back. On the flip side, we then have the class that's making mages' lives a living hell, Marksmanship Hunters. Being able to absolutely shred low armor targets, marksmanship hunters are having a blast right now in the current meta of abundant casters and leather classes. With a simplistic damage rotation of rapid fire followed by aim shots and arcane shots, hunters can just duke it out in the middle of the map and turret gun everyone down that's in range, making the entire enemy team fear for their lives. And unlike previous iterations of the spec, hunters are pretty tanky now with two charges of their survival of the fittest wall and increased healing regardless of which hero talents they take. And although hunters do still need to kite melees with their disengage and master's call, they have far more crowd control to deal with them now as they have access to binding shot, scatter, and high explosive, making kiting easier than ever before. This crowd control can also be used offensively to land traps and score kills, which does add some nuance to the spec where a good hunter will outshine a bad one. 
However, in many matchups, you can simply just sit at the back and wait for your damage to eventually one-shot someone with the assistance of your pet's Mortal Strike, reducing all incoming heals. Because of this increase in tankiness, ability to peel itself, and ridiculous threat to cloth classes, Marksmanship Hunter finds itself in the easy tier. As for Beast Mastery, otherwise known as Marksmanships for people who would rather use an Xbox controller than a keyboard, this spec is all about instant damage on one target. And since the design of Beast Mastery is so heavily focused on activating bleeds on your kill target, it's often very detrimental to swap, as you'll drop your Basilisk Collar passive, meaning that when you join a match, you're basically just going to enter a game, stick your pets on one target, and play till either one of you dies. The only real nuance to the rotation is maintaining barbed shot, but this can very easily be done by having a weak aura to ping you whenever to reapply it. Other than the simplistic rotation, you also have all the tankiness that Marksmanship has with the double wall effect and added healing, and you can still be very effective while kiting, as you're basically just spamming out instants while your pets do the hard work. Moreover, it's also pretty straightforward to land your crowd controls compared to before with all the initiation CCs you have like Scatter, Intimidation, and Binding Shot. And with their damage recently being buffed to levels that are quite frankly pretty absurd when facing cloth and leather classes, Beast Mastery is looking better than ever, as you often don't even need to land crowd control to win the game. With these added buffs and Beast Mastery's straightforward game plan, it finds itself in the very easy tier due to its playstyle, tankiness, and rotation. While we're on the topic of pet classes, let's go over to Demonology, the spec that Blizzard and most of the WoW community would rather you didn't play. Demonology in the War Within is once again all about those demons, summoning a legion of nameplates and then tearing your opponents down through a mix of shadow bolts and overheating their GPU. Unfortunately, the skill creep of players in PvP has really done a number on Demonology as quite frankly the spec hasn't really changed since Shadowlands. We're all very good at dealing with these pets now, as we can all just simply root them to prevent their damage, and almost everyone has a siren to alert you to crowd control their biggest offensive cooldown of Demonic Tyrant until it eventually starts bugging out and dealing no damage at all. Outside of these easily counterable mechanics, Demonology also heavily relies on casting to actually get these demons out, which as we all know is a massive pain point for any ranged spec in retail PvP. And sadly, getting the demons out alone isn't enough, as the majority of your damage actually comes from your Shadow Bolts, which are empowered by how many pets you have out, which unless you're facing casters, is just very difficult to chain together. Defensively, Demonology isn't that hard to play, however, as you can use your Walls of Dark Pact and Unending Resolve in stuns, and with the addition of Demonic Health Stone, you do have quite a bit of longevity, as you can Health Stone every one minute. But in a meta where your biggest counters of Warriors, Windwalkers, Rogues, and Death Knights are running rampant, these defensives are often not enough to survive, and almost everyone can catch up to you after your Demonic Circle and Gateways, making kiting a massive pain point. Finally, Demonology damage really isn't that high, and despite the buffs, you won't be able to overwhelm people in dampening with raw throughput alone. Therefore, are very much reliant on actually landing crowd controls to finish games, which is a burden in and of itself, as you are having to execute setups while everyone else happily PvEs. For all these reasons, we'll be dropping Demonology in the very hard category, as much like Arcane, it has to cast far too much to do far too little. Moving on then, we have Affliction Warlocks, who've seen a fair nerf in a recent patch, making their dreaded one-shot burst far less punchy than the start of the expansion. Affliction at its core is a stereotypical rot class, spreading damage over time effects to every member of the enemy team, and then striking them down with haunts and instant shadow bolts. Now this playstyle, while not hard for some, can be seen as difficult for those more used to single target oriented specs, as tracking and maintaining dots is a mini game in itself. Fortunately for Affliction though, you don't really have to cast too much to get these dots up, and when you do cast, all your abilities like Unstable Affliction and Haunt go off in a second or less, making them quite hard to shut down. And even if you manage to land a kick against Affliction, the War Within has turned their Soul Shard dump of Malefic Rapture into a dual school of Shadow Flame, therefore they aren't completely useless if locked out on their other abilities, as they can still deal a huge amount of damage regardless. Now, because of Affliction's spread pressure playstyle, which is now entwined with Burst from Shadow Bolts, their win condition is pretty straightforward every game. Simply execute your DPS rotation and survive until you eventually win the game, without needing to really utilize crowd control in the majority of cases. However, defensively, as with Demonology, surviving isn't the easiest, as you will need to kite well with your Teleport and Gateway. And even though your Dark Pact and Unending Resolve are easy to use, with the removal of Inevitable Demise's Drain Life Healing, Affliction can find itself being overwhelmed if not played to its full potential. 
Due to the difficulty in surviving and the way Affliction deals spread pressure with dots, we'll be placing Affliction in the medium tier. Then we have the final lock spec of Destruction, which thanks to its preferred hero talent tree of Hellcaller is played much more like an Affliction Warlock currently than what you would usually expect. This is because the main gameplay revolves around putting up your now instant immolate in the form of Wither, and then stacking it to do even more damage by spamming Soul Shard spending abilities. To do this, however, you're mostly going to be using your instance of Rain of Fire and Shadow Burn, as it's far more reliable than casting Chaos Bolt, so rotation-wise, it's not very hard to pull off. And then when you add in the fact that when they do opt to cast, they either cast their 0.5 second Soul Fire, and even if they do get kicked, they have three different schools to choose from with Shadow, Fire, and Chaos, shutting down a Destruction Lock is hard. As for Destruction's win condition, it does tend to lean a bit more into crowd control, however, as your instants aren't really enough to kill through healing, so setting up fears and double mortal coils is the go-to, which does add some difficulty to the class compared to iterations of it when you can just sit in the back and spam out ridiculously large bolts. As for the defensives, they are exactly the same as the other lock specs, so not too hard to use. However, kiting with Demonic Circle and Gateway into melees is an art in itself. For all these reasons, Destruction will be joining Affliction on the medium tier. Next up, let's take a look at Shadow Priest, one of the last actual casters in World of Warcraft. As we've said many times throughout this video, casting in 2024 is out, and instants are in. Well, someone at Blizzard didn't seem to get this memo, and have left Shadow Priest having to cast almost every single ability to do any real damage. And what's even worse is that they don't just have to cast spells, they have to channel them meaning that they are impossible to fake cast with, or you just end up wasting the spell entirely. Void Torrent, for example, it's their biggest damage ability, yet it's a channel that's easy to stop. Then we have their second biggest damage ability of Mind Flay Insanity, which, you guessed it, is also a channel. Finally, their burst cooldown of Dark Ascension or Void Form? Well, you have to cast that too. Shadow Priest's design is so archaic and cast heavy that if you're not able to fake cast well, you're going to be in for a terrible time. And that's not even mentioning their need to maintain dots to generate insanity, which is a whole new level of pain. Casting and maintaining dots isn't the only hard thing about Shadow Priest though, as their rotation is also just ridiculously complicated compared to some other specs, as they just have so many buttons and procs they need to use. In fact, the only easy thing about Shadow Priest is that their win condition is very clear cut, with their stun silence combo that can allow their DPS partner to finish the game, while they struggle to get some casts off to assist with the kill. Defensively, Shadow Priest is probably medium tier, however, as their main save button of dispersion can be used in stuns, although it is on the Shadow School which can be punishing if you're not ready for it. Other than that, you also have access to Life Swap, again on the Shadow School, and the Heals of Desperate Prayer accompanied by some passive tankiness talents too to really bolster your survivability. You also don't really have to kite as a Shadow Priest too much, as you literally don't have movement abilities, so you're pretty reliant on just soaking damage. All in all, it's a pretty difficult class to pull off in melee heavy lobbies, however, since their defensives aren't that punishing to use and their win condition basically plays itself, we're going to be placing it into the hard tier instead of the very hard tier. Moving on, we then have Boomkins, who historically have been one of the most altable casters in the past few expansions. Boomkins have been and still are very straightforward when it comes to their win condition in Solo Shuffle. This is because of their 2 minute incarnation cooldown basically being an I win button on its second use if it's pulled off with a little bit of crowd control to assist it. Which speaking of crowd control, Boomkin has one of, if not the best CC in the game with Cyclone, allowing them to survive and build ridiculous offensive momentum whenever they can land these on any player in the game. Although fishing for precognition and then timing your reclones does come with its own struggles. As far as the DPS rotation of Boomkin goes, it hasn't really changed in years from its builder spender with Star Surge, so it's not too hard to pull off. Once again, the only part you may find difficult is tracking dots on multiple players. But once you get the hang of that, it's generally pretty easy going. The hardest part of Boomkin is definitely survival, as currently you're pretty squishy, and ducking into bear form for frenzy regeneration won't be enough, so you'll have to know how to maneuver around the map with wild charge, dash, and stampeding roar to stay alive into competent players. In conclusion, Boomkin in some metas is seen as an easier caster, but because of how squishy it is right now, you do need to pull off some acrobatics to live, making it a solid medium difficulty. Finally, that leaves us with Elemental Shaman. Now, in Dragonflight, Elemental was in a spot where it could literally be scripted to do max DPS without any of the utility, and that would be enough to get rank 1 in Solo Shuffle. 
However, now the damage is tuned a little bit lower, and with the removal of the Wind Speaker talent giving us instant lava bursts every time we Earth Shock, the damage rotation is a bit more reactive. Now, Elemental Shamans need to consume their procs, whether it be a Lava Burst or Ice Fury as they come, rather than knowing what their next move is, resulting in far harder gameplay. This lower damage and more complicated DPS rotation also means that shamans have to use their utility a bit better, as games will be longer since they no longer just one-shot people out the gates, making using grounding, tremors, and their knocks significantly more important, as their win condition, although still all about maximizing DPS, lies a little bit deeper into dampening than it once did. As for shamans' defensives, they can be a little bit tricky to use as you can't astral shift or burrow in stuns, however with the passive tankiness shaman has with its male armor, earth shields, and healing streams, you won't really find yourself having to kite or getting one shot that often, earning itself a spot in the medium category. And that's a wrap! Here's our final tier list of the easiest to hardest ranged DPS in the War Within. And the crowning winner of the easiest ranged is definitely Beast Mastery Hunter, as due to its buffs, you basically don't have to play half the class since you don't even need to crowd control to win as well as its tankiness reaching unseen levels with two charges of Survival of the Fittest, Fane Death, Turtle, and Exhilaration Healing, making it very difficult to take down, and that's without even taking kiting into account. Finally, its damage rotation is one of the more simplistic ones as well, as you don't need to cast and therefore can't really be shut down like other ranged. If you're wanting to get started and rank up fast on any of the classes we covered today, check out our brand new website at skillcap.com. Our guides are designed to get you ahead by teaching fundamentals that actually carry an arena. We've even leveled up our revolutionary add-on, which with the click of a button can give you the number one UI for PvP in just a matter of seconds. So to get started with everything you need in the new expansion, be sure to check out the exclusive offer below and learn how you can gain 400 rating risk-free. For now, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.